All right, we're back with round 10, first round of day two at Dallas Regionals. Um, we're watching uh, Williams. Oh, I'm not going to try and pronounce his first name. Williams with uh, Night March versus James with uh, Taylor with Zorark. I think it's just Alonzo Ark. Um, and he is playing the Toad Karen counter uh, for the Night March matchup. Um, so he does have an out to the Night March matchup. Um, instead of just getting rolled over really fast by it. Um, so he ideally is going to start off, you know, uh, ideally, the most ideal way a Zorak deck can work is you go turn one Bridget against Night March into turn two Hex, kill something with Zorak, and your opponent either cannot kill your Zorak from there because they don't have access to Marsh Shadow, or. Um, they don't have access to Marsh Shadow, or they just can't one-shot it. Because um, you need, like, almost all your Nightmare Changes card pile for a Punkaboo or a Joltik to take a one-shot on, uh, <clears throat> on a Zorak. Um, so you just kind of hope they can't get the one-shot from there. And then once... Or if they do get the one-shot and commit to the one-shot, you want to follow up with Toad plus Karen uh, and Quaking Punch. Uh, we see the turn one gets us. Um, not... It, it can be good against Zorak decks, but I don't think it's actually that good. They play so many, like, they play a high counter Bridget and Lele and Shaman. Uh, and that's actually a very good hand from uh, James, especially if he gets, like, a decent top deck out of the next two turns. So, yeah, I don't really like the turn one gets us that much from uh, from Night March, from Night March in general. So, I'm going to stop it here. I don't really like against Zorak decks. Maybe he doesn't know what he's playing against. So, um, the turn one gets us actually isn't horrible. I actually prefer a turn one Hex as long as your start is efficient but like if you look at his hand i think it's like dce choice band via seeker or something um so he doesn't have anything going on in that hand so i would have liked to have just seen him go for like a sycamore or an end maybe if he has that many resources in his hand you don't have to try and get cheesy wins every game uh that you can you can kind of just play standard uh set up night marchers uh night march and one shot stuff uh if you want if you if you're playing super cheesy um you don't have to play super cheesy all the time. Um, sometimes it's worth it and sometimes it works. I think uh, Hex is actually better than Getsus turn one. I don't know how he ended up with the Hex. Maybe he just had it raw in hand. Uh, unless I missed something. Um, so I guess that's fine. But he did Ultra Ball. Oh, he Ultra Ball for Lele for Getsus. So yeah, so I don't think that was right. I think Hex is better. Um, it looks like he had nothing going on in his hand. So that makes Getsus better. Um, if you have nothing going on at all in your hand, uh, you probably shouldn't do either. If you have no kind of follow up at all. Also committing this DC here, this DCE here, I don't like because then uh, we actually see it in James' hand. He has a DCE. He can just now commit the DCE to Lele and kill us. Um, okay, and I just talked about this in the last match. I want to see three Zerua. Uh, I know Muck is pretty good in this matchup, but oh no! All right, hang. On, I take that back. I usually want to see three Zerua. Uh, in this instance, I guess it's fine. He's killing the Joltik. He's removing any threat at a play from Williams. I take that back. I like the Muck here, actually, uh, or the Grimer, because the, the 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 start from Williams was so slow that there's no threat pressure at all on the Zeruas. Um, although if Williams had had a better start, I definitely would have liked to have seen three Zerua. If he was going to be able to go, like, turn two Guzma kill Zerua, uh, turn two Lysander kill Zerua. Um, oh, we got another Zerua in hand. Top deck Zerua. Okay, that's actually just sick then. He top deck Zerua. I saw his initial hand. I was like, there's no Zerua in there. But yeah, the top deck Zerua is pretty sick then. All right. The Grimer's definitely good then. I take it back. Um Top text Ultra Ball. Okay, he even has Sycamore in hand, actually. So he had some follow-up. But that's like... The Joltik's just going to die if he just has a DCE. So then you force a push-up Lele, which means you need to draw so many things to actually have a good turn. You need Floatstone, a bunch of Battle Compressors, uh, DCE, probably Choice Band to actually get a kill next turn. That's all you really want to do. I would have much rather seen him go for Ultra Ball for another Night Marcher or a Zerua, actually. Get setting up the Zorks in this deck is... Super good once they get online. Setting up the Zorks in this matchup is super good once they get online. I would like to see an ultra, like, ultra Ball for Zerua. Sycamore. Attach DCE maybe even to the Zerua instead of the active. Attach DCE to Zerua. Attach Choice Band to Zerua. Sycamore. And you just Sycamore there. And, but he went with the turn one gets us. And now he's like super far behind, I feel like. Um, and then he goes for the Shaman again. Once again, he's trying to like get extra. Uh, and maybe at this point he has to go for the Shaman though because he's that far behind. Um, but he set himself that far behind with the initial play. Um, but now at this point where he's this far behind, I feel like maybe going for the, the Shaman is actually the right play. Um, uh, 
we'll see what he gets here. Still looking, still looking, still looking. Three night marches, it looks like. Um, I would be surprised if he KO'd this later this turn, though. And if he doesn't, this puts, like, James in a, a very commanding position if he does not get this knockout here. <clears throat> looks like he's finally going for the Sycamore. I would like to actually see a DCE committed to the Lele. Like, he just discarded a DCE off the Sycamore. Um, so, once again, he's, like, getting super greedy, trying to hit, like, literally everything. Um, literally everything. He's trying to hit literally everything in this turn. He's trying to get Floatstone, Night Marcher, DCE, Retreat, Knockout. Just commit the DCE to the Lele and do the 80 damage. Make it easier to kill this Lele later on in the game. Especially once... Um, he might not know this, but James plays the Toad Quaking Punch. Um, so you're going to have to get through the Toad. Having this set up on the bench with damage on it will be like really nice to draw two prizes with later. Because you might be able to like, damage this, uh, one-shot a Zorark in like the next turn or two. Uh, and then from there, you have to find a way to kill a Toad, most likely. Uh, and then once you kill the Toad, though, this is just, like, very easy to kill off the bench. So I would have definitely just liked to see a DCE here to just put some pressure on a Lele. It also means a Lele can retreat next turn. Um, but now he's stuck in a position where how is he ever moving this Lele unless he hits his one of Floatstone? He literally has to hit his one of Floatstone because teammates is not getting triggered before the – most likely before the Lele dies. So he's not going to be able to teammates also for the uh, uh, for the Floatstone either. Um, burning a puzzle here because once again he's looking looks like he's gonna dig with shaman Marshadow comes down that's fine punkaboo and he's digging with shaman again knowing that his top three cards are like trash uh, he looked at his top three and none of his three cards actually get him anything going for this turn um but then he still commits to the shaman just like hold this take a turn you have to like slow down and like take a turn off and you kind of have to reset and make sure you can do something your next turn because he's digging so hard to get everything this turn um and if he gets none of it or not even, you know, you didn't even get close to get any of it. Um, you don't do anything for your turn. I would, would have really liked to have seen the DCE on the Lele. Um, not, do not bench this Shaman. Marshadow coming down is good. Jaltic coming down is good. Punkaboo coming down is, those are all probably good. Um, good to come down. But the, the lack of the DC on the Lele really hurts, actually. Um, now, next turn, he has to go for a Lysander play. Um, also, like, the, also once again, like, he has no Zerua set up. You, setting up Zorark in this deck is, like, it's, the deck is still good when it doesn't set up Zorark, but once you get Zorark set up in Night March, it's insane. It's so strong. Like, it gives you so many more options turn to turn. Uh, it makes it so much harder for your opponent to lock you out of the game. Um, yeah, so, like, initially, the first Ultra Ball for the Lele, for the Getsis. Uh, I didn't like it. If he did have the Sycamore in hand, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if he drew the Sycamore off the Getsis or not. Um, he gets this for like one. Um, if he, I'm not sure if he had the Sycamore off the Getsis or not. Either way, I would have liked to see the Ultra Ball for Zerua if he did, and then Sycamore, or just Ultra Ball for Lele for Sycamore. Uh, commit the energy to the Zerua. Um, the Zerua or even the Lele at that point, but not the Joltik. Um, not the Joltik for sure. Um, and I think, I mean, he just knew actually. He went Ultra Ball for Lele for Getsis, and he saw the DCE in hand. So he maybe committed the DCE first here um to the joltic uh and then gets this but if you're going to commit to get this you always get this first like if you know you're going to get this that gives you more cards in hand you do that first and then you decide the rest of your actions um so yeah that dc should have never been on the joltic when it was that should have always been on the lele on the bench or ideally like i said if he had the sycamore in hand ultra balls rule a dce play the uh play the sycamore and that's like a very uh fine that like that it is a slight risk because like what well, i said like you only play the one float stone you want to save the dc on the zerua um but you play so many basic night marchers that the chance of you not finding one off a of sycamore is very low um so like even if you know the joltics uh has can die once again if you didn't use gets if you use sycamore over gets this he wouldn't see the dc but he could just have a dc and kill the joltic um you want another night marcher to come up after that joltic um so you could argue night marcher over zerua in the initial turn there um but the chances of you finding a Night Marcher if you Sycamore are so high that I think it's still correct to get the Zero there for sure. It looks like we have a very good, very, 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 very good turn going to come out of James' turn. Is he, he might actually go for an early Karen, which I'm actually fine with the current setup. Just get it out and get it into this card pile. Um, and like this, this, with how far behind... Uh, Williams is this early Karen is actually very devastating. Um, he's committed a ton of resources already. Uh, if this Karen happens, like he's then gonna have to commit a bunch of other resources to do anything next turn. Once again, he still can't even move his Lele. Um, 
Uh, he's going to have to commit a bunch of other resources to actually even consider getting a knockout this turn. And this 40 damage on the Lele is actually can be relevant uh, to get a follow-up knockout. Ooh, and he gets the, the, the muck, man. It's going from bad to worse for a Nightmare player. I mean, at this point, if I was Williams, I think I would scoop. Um, scoop. I, w I guess I would play out this turn. If I can get a knockout this turn, I would stay in the game. If I can't get a knockout this turn, I think I scoop, though. I think I scoop for sure. Um, he has Battle Compressor in hand. Joltik. Battle Compressor. Sycamore. Yeah. So I would, if I can't, if I can get a knockout this turn, I guess I stay in the game. Because um, it's still possible I can win. If I can't get a knockout this turn, though, I'm definitely definitely packing it up, though. Okay. It's going to get up to five Night Marchers. Mm, doesn't look like he got much though. We'll see the trainer's mail. I guess I could get floatstone. And there's a puzzle. If there's double puzzle, he gets gets the knockout. But I don't think there's double puzzle in his hand. Field blower not gonna do much. Uh, I think that's a D Valley in play already. So I mean, maybe use that later. It looks like he's gonna pass. Uh, but once again, here we go. Like, if he had just prepped the DCE on this Lele and swung for 80, uh, he could then retreat this turn and Joltik would take the knockout. Um, right? Yeah. Just swing with this Lele, 80. Uh, next turn, Joltik takes knockout. Instead, he tried to get really greedy, tried to hit everything in one turn, the float stone, get a Night Marcher down with the DCE, and then enough Night Marchers in the discard pile. Just, you don't have to, like, you're not going to hit that. Uh, and you're not behind if you whiff that. So there's no reason to go for that. If you are really behind if you whiff that, then that's when you do go for it. But he wasn't going to be. So there's no reason for him to go for that. Um, I would actually just like to see another Karen out of James. Like Karen knockout here would be like more than fine. He has muck in play. So Mouse Shadow shut off. He doesn't have to worry about hexing at all ever. Um, stand in knockout plus Karen would be nice. That's also fine, I think. Uh, ooh, gets the egg in the discard pile. Um, and then... Like, like these these kind of early efficient Karens when your opponent is behind initially uh, can be enough to win the matchup for Zorark. Usually it ha there has to be a Karen Quaking Punch at some point. Um, not in this scenario, though, actually. Um, he's he's far enough ahead to the point where um, he can just Karen every turn from here and he'll probably win the game. Um, especially with the muck out because um, then you need to commit so many more uh, Pokemon each turn. All right, so he messed up there. He should have propagated first, <clears throat> propagated and then Karen, but it's not it's not a huge deal. Um, slight error, but um, it shouldn't hurt him too much. Hopefully, hopefully, we're hoping he doesn't hurt him too much. I mean, he's down to one card hand, so he's he doesn't want to run out of things to trade away. We see, I see a. Puzzle. I think he has teammates in the discard pile, so he could go via Seeker for teammates and get that. He needs to get a knockout somewhere. Uh, and actually, with James's hand being so small right now, um, it's possible this Jolta can take this knockout and maybe another one. Oh, no, we got the DC on Lele, so he's standard. He didn't retreat. Ugh. Well, you need this to kill this for sure, I think, at this point. Match another Jolta. Um, I think there's teammates in there, and I know he has via Seeker in hand. Prep to Jolta. Cool. Okay, so... I'm pretty. I can't actually tell if this is a D Valley or not. I think this is a Dimension Valley. Um. So I would have almost like to have seen him. You go with Punkaboo, but I guess he needs that many more Night Marchers, so maybe not. Um. But at this point, I don't know. No, I guess this will have to be fine. I would have liked to seen the Punkaboo because eventually this stadium is going to get replaced by Skyfield, and he already discarded another D Valley, and I think this is a D Valley. Um. So what's going to happen is. This Punkaboo will just never be able to attack, which means he'll never be able to push it up, attack with it, and then have it get discarded. Um, so, yeah, I would have liked to have seen him just go for it be like, at this point, you just have to be like, screw it. I, I need this to happen. So you need uh, to push Punkaboo there and attach DC to Punkaboo and then just hope you get enough Night March in the discard pile for the Punkaboo to one-shot this. Because um, you need this Punkaboo to hit the discard pile because you're running out of resources at this point. Actually, uh, on the Night March side, uh, Stadium's out. 
other stadiums in play. As soon as James hits a sky field, it's going to come down, re- counter the stadium, and Punkaboo is just never going to attack, which means it's never going to sit in the active spot and die, which you needed to do. You needed to sit in the active spot and die. So um, that would have pushed Punkaboo there for sure. You had the DC in hand already, so all you need to do, you need to get like get a battle compressor anyways. Um, so you just hope you get enough uh, besides the battle compressor. To be honest, I think that's how you go with it. All right. So James found another egg, and he's trying eggs. Or he found the same egg, which would be unfortunate because that's one less card that he got to see. Uh, he has the KO for sure, and then all he has to do is kind of find a way to KO that Shaman or the Marshadow on the bench. The Shaman or the Shaman or the Marshadow. Um, and he'll be good. I think I see Skyfield. I'd like to see that come down for sure. There's no reason for the Skyfield to not come down right now. Just counter that stadium. He's never able to push Punkaboo. Like that's what I said. Now he can never use Punkaboo. He just can't use Punkaboo anymore. And the Punkaboo will never die. So uh, Punkaboo's just going to sit on bench for the rest of its life. Uh, you see his arc. I like it. Sudowoodoo. Uh, I guess Sudowoodoo is fine, right? Yeah, Sudowoodoo is fine. Oh, it doesn't matter. Muck's starting at Sudowoodoo off. So it's just another bench Pokemon. I was like, hold on. I don't know if I like the... Uh, I'm not sure if I like the idea of Sudowoodoo getting rid of uh, one of William's bench Pokemon, but I guess it would be fine. But he has Muck anyway, so it doesn't matter. And even follows up with a Hex. Um... Uh, not that there was any abilities for uh, Williams to use anyways. Um, but just getting out of the deck is important. Like That's one of those things where you just... That's actually a very good play on James's part is literally just sitting it out of the deck. Because um, you just don't need it in your deck anymore. You don't need Hex in your deck anymore. If you don't have any other support to play for turn, you may as well just uh, play Hex. Um, and he's going with Sycamore. So, I mean, I almost know... I, I think this means for sure that uh, James is about to win. I don't think there's any way James loses here anymore. I'm pr- I, w- I would bet that he has game. He has a Guzma for to kill Shaman here. Um, we'll see if Williams can get the Night Marchers get the knockout at least, though. Yeah, there's a Guzma. All right. Game two. Uh, so I think very – Let's just, just to recap the game, I think there was some very early game, some very sloppy early game play um, from our Night March player, um, which led to just, like, very slow start. Uh, initially, and then followed up by just not being able to move his active because he tried to get really greedy and just hit everything in one turn. You don't have to hit everything in one turn. You can take two turns to try and get everything you need, get it all together. Um, he had just played a little bit more, uh, restricted a little bit more, um, disciplined, I guess. Um, he tried to get, like, the, you don't need to get cheesy with the turn one gets us. You don't have to do that every turn. Uh, it's not as good in every matchup as people think. Um, I really hope he doesn't go for it again here. If anything, the, like actually with this hand, I see Battle Compressor via Seeker Sycamore. I would like to see him turn one Hex. I think Hex is a lot stronger against Zorak decks than a turn one gets us. Um, they play three Lele. Oops. They play three Lele, two Shaman, uh, three, four Bridget. Um, uh, and they're out to turn one Bridget is usually Lele. Um, is usually Lele. There's a Hex. Please take the Hex. Take the Hex. You can do it. Um, they're out to turn one. Uh, Bridget is usually Lele, so by using Hex, you're shutting off more uh, options for the turn one Bridget than um, you should have more options for the turn one Bridget. So yeah, the, he takes his he takes the dowsing machine. Taking the Hex there was so nice. It was free. It was just you transmail into Hex. That was that was great actually. I would have loved to see him take the Hex, or even before even using the trainer's mail, I would have liked to have seen him battle compressor away Hex two Night Marchers. He has Via Seeker Sycamore in hand, and, and then play the trainer's mail. Um, yeah, so I'd like to see, so I would like to see this battle compressor played initially. I would like to have seen it ditch Hex, uh, two Lampants, um, and then I would like to have seen him maybe even not even play the trainer's mail, just go via Seeker for Hex pass. That's what I like to, would have liked to have seen. Um, try and shut down the turn one Bridget. Um, and if you do that, like just go from there and the next turn one shot the toad, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't have a DC in hand to quaking punch you. We see he does. Um, and then go from there. Um, you could also like battle compressor away. Sh- you could also have battle compressor away. Shaman, um, could battle compressor away. Shaman hex, um, shaman hex night marcher, and he's another shaman in hand. And then you just uh, sky return loop the toad until uh, James makes a move. Uh, that's another out, or until you set up a Zork to like kill the toad. Um, but I definitely would like to see the turn one hex. Um, I I would assume he's going for the getsus again. We'll see. I see. I saw it gets this double lamp in. So I, I assume we're going to see it gets this here. Uh, or there's that card. Is that Ranger? It looks like Ranger. 
Ranger gets his Joltik. I don't know why he's getting Joltik over getting rid of Joltik over Lantern. I guess he'll attack with the March Shadow with the Night March. But you need so many more Nitrogen in this card pile anyways. I'd rather have the option of benching a Joltik have it as like a top deck than the other thing. And look at there's the Getsus again. Uh, so Hex wouldn't have been that good either. Uh, but this Getsus actually just doesn't. Like why? Like they don't play that many item cards. You don't destroy their hand turn one a lot of the time with Getsus. This is why you don't Getsus against his Auric deck. Um... Um, you rarely ever destroy their hand with a Hex is Hex is always better because it usually is a higher chance to stop the turn one Bridget, uh, which is what you're really looking for. You should want to shut down their Bridget. Um, yeah. Um, you don't have to Hex, but just don't get this. Just use Sycamore for your turn. Just go just go set up your, your board. Um, so right here, he's thinking about Dowsing Machine. I don't like this. He knows he's getting N, but... Um, there's a possibility James actually just top decks Lele, Ultra Ball, or Karen, and then just goes Karen Quaking Punch. Um, and he's already committing to another Battle Compressor right here. Um, so I would like to have just seen him keep it just in case. Because, like, if, if James just top decks, like I said, Karen, Ultra Ball, Lele, I would personally just go ahead and get Karen, and I go Karen Quaking Punch this turn. That's what I would do. Um, so if he commits this, I would like to have seen him discard a Shaman, so he could do the Sky Return play, actually. And just start Sky Return Jenny. Because he has another Shaman in hand. And I would even maybe bench the Shaman. Um, I also don't like this puzzle. You know James is going to end you. He's looked at James's hand. He is, Once again, I said he could do the Karen thing. That's fine. Um, but he's almost 100% going to end you. You saw James's hand. He had nothing in there except N. Why would you play a puzzle? It just goes back into your deck for sure. Uh, he's debating using setup. I would use setup at this point. Uh, he, he finds the Ruas. You can find... Uh, What's he have? Oh, it's a Lele setup. Okay. So he kept the Lele over the Sycamore. I'm not sure why. It's not horrible. Lele into his Toad doesn't attack her. It's decent. Um, uh, he has a Shaman in hand. If you can get that Shaman in the discard pile, I would try and get the Shaman in the discard pile. Um, uh, I'd bench the Joltik. Um, I would probably float stone the Marsh Shadow, to be honest. Um, I guess right now he can Nightmare for 100, which isn't bad. You can go set up again. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I guess this is fine right here. I still would have put a shame in the discard pile so I could sky return my Marsh Shadow, though. Because um. actually, James doesn't even need a top deck Karen this turn. He could do it next turn. So he's going to draw. He's probably going to end with DCE active, Skyfield in play, maybe bench the Bunnelby, and then N. Um, and then next turn, he can actually go and find the. Uh, Find the Karen. He can find Karen next turn, and the Toad probably lives. Um, maybe not. Maybe not. Then he could retreat and hit it with Lele, I guess. So, yeah, it's sufficient, I guess. This gets a two-shot between these two. But he has to commit two DCE, which sucks. Um, so, even if he just goes, like, quicking punch, Bridget, then kill the March out of next turn, that's pretty good. Um, I just feel like uh, Williams played down a bunch of stuff he didn't need to. Like, so unnecessarily early, maybe. And then he could have just chilled. So we see at least an ultra ball. I would assume Zerua. It's possible he actually gets muck here, but I doubt it. Or Grimer. Probably just a Zerua. I would like to see a Zerua. Um, I guess if his hand's dead, he would go for something else. But And Quaking Punch. Zerua. Finally, we see a Zerua come down. And it's not like the most important thing to ever get down, but when you get the Zeruas down and you get the Zoroks going, it's just so good. Um, it looks like his hand might be dead. <laughs> yep. Looks like he can't not get through Quaking Punch. So this is going to buy James a lot of time here. Um, he'll have this turn. Um, he'll have two turns. Of, he'll have another turn of just locking him out of the game. Hopefully his hand's not just dead. I saw Lele, so it should not just be just dead. Um, I'd like to see Lele probably for Bridget if he has another follow-up. Get, you know, two more Zeruas. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Looks like he went with Karen, though. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of this at this point because um, if, if Williams just has another DC, he just retreats to Lele and kills the Toad. Um, and we actually see the DC in hand. So he goes with Punch, and we should just see D 
DCE to Lele Retreat and Knockout. I, I'm pretty sure that's 100 damage there. So this is just should be a knockout on the Toad here. Uh, Marshadow is still alive, which is huge. Uh, Marshadow is still alive. There's no setup yet on James's side. Like This is actually looking really good um, if he takes a knockout here. Okay, there we go. All right, I like it. Knockout. So yeah, I don't like the Karen there from James because there's no reason to believe that uh, Williams does not have a... There's no reason to believe Williams does not have a... Um, DCE there um, at all. Uh, he could very easily have a DCE there. There's no reason for him to attach a DCE last turn. Um, so I don't like that play from James at all. I'm, I'm positive he has a Lele in hand. Um, so I would have much rather just seen him go Lele for Bridget and get to Zorua. Um, I also think I would like to see him push Bunnelby here. I don't know why he pushed up the Zorark. Okay, there's a Lele. Um, maybe he goes for N here. or oh, he's going for Getsis. Okay, that's I think that's reasonable as well. Um, this Zorark is never killing this Lele. Um, it's possible it does. This, but you should play like the Zork is never killing the Lele this turn and even if it does the Marshadow just kills your Zork your only Zork setup um, I would have liked to have seen him push up the Bunnelby this is fine you still get off this Getz's play but the Zork is just safer on the bench um, especially after the Getz's especially after the Getz's like uh it's so safe on the bench after the Getz's um oh he's getting him to nothing I mean he, you don't know that at the beginning of your turn though um see so yeah, I would have liked to have seen the Bunnelby just go up for the turn um, and you can just chill. Maybe even Rototiller. Who knows? Put a DCE back. Um, another important card. Maybe put Karen back. I don't know. If you have, get a Lele and you want a Karen next turn. Um, but this just feels way worse than just actually. Um, feels a lot worse than actually just pushing up Bunnelby. Because um, uh, you don't know what your gets to seen away. Um... So you don't know if you're actually going to lock your opponent out of the game. Um, it's a pretty strong turn overall, though, actually. The Sudowood was actually really good here because it locks up his bench. He can't top deck Ultra Ball, Lele, or Shaman. But, like, once again, you don't know you're getting that immediately. Oh, there's top deck uh, Zorak. That's pretty good. I um, assume we're going to see a trade. He has three Night Marchers in hand. I think that's his hand is three Night Marchers. Uh, two or three Night Marchers. Yeah, because it's also like, especially, so after that quaking punch, this made me think about, like after that quaking punch happened and he hit into the March Shadow, uh, March Shadow was just like, if William's hands, William's hand literally could have been Sycamore DCE. And he's like, well, I'm going to hit this Toad for 100 and the next turn retreat to this hit for more and then I have a Sycamore to follow up. Um, but you don't want to expose the DCE right away so you can make him play into the quaking punch again on the March Shadow um, and Karen play and then they just follow up with the Lele for the kill on the Toad. Um, so that could easily have been like a very, uh, very possible situation that he had DC Sycamore in hand. Um, so even once the DC comes out, he doesn't even have to Sycamore yet. Cause he could be, he could be, have a ton of items in here. They just waiting to use once he get a, gets out of quaking punch lock. Um, so the gets this does reveal that he has nothing, but, but still, I would have much rather seen him, uh, much rather seen him do, um, push bundle for the turn. hundred percent would have rather seen him push bundle for the turn. I don't think you have to pressure this Lele right now. I don't think it's like that big of a threat. Um, especially if you're Getsis and your opponent, the chance of them him being able to like pop off and Marshadow Guzma kill your Zork is just extremely low. Um, so we see another puzzle uh, from Williams. This better not be a puzzle into a trade. I wouldn't be disappointed if it is. I think he traded. Uh, but yeah, but even if it's... So he traded into the puzzle and then played puzzle. But next thing you're drawing your card and then trading. So there's no reason to do this. Sometimes there is a reason to do this, but this reason this time there's not. Um, he has stuff to trade out of hand. The only time you do this play is where you have a puzzle. Knowing you can trade next turn, the only time you do this play is where you puzzle on the top three is when you don't have anything you can trade out of hand, and you need to keep all this, and you need to hope to puzzle into like an N or a shuffle draw. Uh, so you puzzle first, and then next turn you top deck, and then uh, play the top deck, and then trade after you play the top deck. Um, so this made no sense. Uh, he's got nine marchers in hand. He can easily go top deck, trade, go from there.
Stretcher for Toad is very nice. I don't see a reason not. He goes. He might go for three. I don't think you need the muck at this point. I would just put the toad on. I would just put toad in play to be honest. Yeah, I like it. I like just getting toad putting in play. Um, Colors would be yep. Colors is sick here. Ten card, nine card hand. Plus trade should be able to easily find another Zorx. That's two trades. Um, ideally, he probably ends this turn. I don't know. But there's a hundred on the lele, so I think killing that lele with a lele is the ideal way to end this turn. Uh, you know he's not drawing great, so killing it seems good. Um, I like the idea of killing it for sure. So I would I would like to see it die to... I would like to see him retreat to Lele and kill it with Lele. Not sure what he's... Oh, he can match more Pokemon here. Probably going to get a Zerua. Oh, he's going to go so he's gonna go for the Grimm. He's going to set up the Muck. Uh, Muck's in this card pile, so I think he's going to have to double puzzle for it at some point. But that's fine. Mm, okay, so we got standing going. I would... Okay, so that kind of skipped for a second. We don't really fully see what happens here. Okay, so it skipped. Uh, he got standing. Grimer comes on the bench. I still think I would... Oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe this is the right way to go about it. Because you still want to go to odd prizes. But you have Toad set up. Hmm. You know he's dead drawing. I really want to set up two trades here, personally. We know he had the other Zork in hand. I really want to set up two trades here and then kill this with Lele. And then if he does pop off and kill Lele, you can follow up with Quaking Punch Karen. Um, yeah, I want to set up two trades here. I, going for the stand-in isn't bad. I would have set up two trades, attach DC here, retreat, uh, special charge him back in, uh, attack with Lele, kill this. This should have 100 on it, I think. He had this in play last turn, 100, 180 knockout. Um, I would have attacked with Lele here and set up two traders. Um, and then maybe from there, I don't even know if I would have gotten Grimer. I think I would have gotten another Zerua, to be honest. Because um, um, if is going to attack, it's going to be like next turn. Um, and then from there, you either kill it or it, it goes offline. You can Hex. I don't know if James plays Hex, actually. I guess that's something that changes stuff, is if he plays Hex or not. Um, yeah, I would definitely set up two trade kill with Lele. Um I just want cards, man. I just want to draw cards. A uh, stand-in's reasonable. Like I don't, I don't hate the stand-in play either, though. I think the stand-in play is actually fine. So, I would have personally just gone for the double trade. Um, so I don't know if they came into time here. It looks like they, they looks like they came into time, and uh, James is gonna end up with the one zero. All right, so James is with the one zero. Um, once again, I think the early game from Williams, like the early game in Night March, is so important too. I was not a fan of how he played out the early game once again in this game. He went for the Getsis. Getsis is not that strong against this deck. It's they don't they play items, but like they play so many ways around it. You're never shutting them out of the game. You almost never shut them out of the game with the Getsis, and there's just a good chance that you just don't get anything and you don't like you don't do anything for your turn at all. If you have a reasonable start and you have follow up off of an option of a turn one supporter, always go hex. Hex is a higher chance to shut them out of the turn one bridget, and that's all you really want to do is shut them off that turn one bridget. Shut him out of that turn one Bridget. And that's that's huge if you can do that. Hex is better at that than gets us. Do Hex. Only if you have a reasonable follow-up. Like a Sycamore, a Shaman, literally like anything. Because um, you can pop off really hard with Night March to the point where you should be able to get a one-shot on the following turn uh, pretty consistently. Don't get this turn one as Night March against Zorak decks. Use Hex. Um, maybe against the Quad Eggs deck. Uh, gets us a little bit more reasonable. They play more items. Um, against Lonzo. Hex, don't get this. Um, and don't get greedy either. You can pl you can take a turn off of not getting a one-shot with Night March if you're going to get a one-shot almost for sure next turn instead of you having like a 20, like a 10% chance to get a one-shot this turn. Take the game slower. Get the one-shot for sure the next turn. Don't worry about getting the one-shot this turn if you have to hit a ridiculous amount of stuff as long as you can still win the game reasonably. You don't have to one-shot every single turn with Night March even though it seems, even though the deck can do it and it seems like fun. And uh, it would be very nice. You don't have to do it every turn. Uh, just make sure you can do it at some point. That's more important. All right. That's it.